Hey everybody, welcome to Wavy Path Followers. Today we're going to design and build this entire animation. We're going to start off in Boxy SVG designing the waves and then we'll head on over to CodePen and create a function that's going to create all the circles for us and animate them along this path. What's nice about this is you may notice that in addition to just following the paths, each dot is going to fade in and scale up at the beginning and then fade out and scale down. And we're going to add a little extra flair too by staggering the animation and giving each animation random durations. So every time you reload this animation, you're going to see something just slightly different and it will be pleasantly rewarding to your viewers. And what's great about this lesson is that we're just going to be tapping into things we've already learned and combining them. So please be sure you've watched my previous videos, Creating SVG Elements with Code and Introducing Motion Path Plugin. With that knowledge under your belt, this is going to be a breeze. So let's start out by designing the paths in Boxy SVG. So here in Boxy SVG, I'm going to start drawing some wavy lines. I'm going to use the spline tool with the type of cubic bezier. And then I'm going to go down to the bottom here, click drag up to about here and play with the arc just a little bit, maybe come down a bit. And then as I move off screen, maybe do something like this. I'm gonna hit escape to stop drawing. And I'm going to go to the fill settings and remove the fill. And now I'm just going to use the edit tool to do just a little fine tuning. I'm gonna maybe move this point up here. Just want sort of like a subtle wave. So I'm just going to speed through a few minor adjustments here and we'll see how it goes. I think this is good enough. So now I'm going to rely on some keyboard shortcuts. I'm going to command C to copy and command V to paste a copy. By hitting shift T, I'm going to go to the transform tool, which will allow me to move this path, place it right around here. And then I'm going to do a shift E to go to the edit tool. And I'm just going to take the first point and snap it to the first point of the other path and take the end point and snap it down like that. With this path still sort of selected, I'm gonna do a command C to copy it and a command V to paste it. And to move the path, I need to do shift T to go to the transform tool. And again, I'm gonna move it, I'm just gonna move it so it's offset vertically. Shift E is going to get me back to the edit tool so I can move the individual points around and snap to the beginning and snap to the end. So I'm just now going to repeat that process a few times very quickly. And I suggest you do this on your own so that you really learn these keyboard shortcuts. I might play around with moving some of these points around just to give it a little bit of variance. And I think that's looking nice. And before we go into code pen, I'm just going to stylize one of these strokes with a gradient. So in the stroke panel, I'm going to select a radial gradient. And for this center color, I'm just going to choose like a really bright green, okay? And you'll see right now that it is fading out to a black dark color. And what I'm going to do for the end color is select a green that's pretty darn close and bring the opacity down to nothing. So what that's going to do is gradually fade out the stroke towards the ends. And instead of taking the time to apply a similar gradient to all the strokes, I'm just gonna do it via code when we jump into CodePen. But before we go there, I'm just gonna do a Command A to select all of the strokes, and I'm gonna go group them together with a Command G. Now you'll see they are inside a grouping, and to make it easy to target these paths, I'm going to give this grouping an ID. So let's head on over to the meta panel. And I'm just going to give the ID of paths. Now with that all done, we can go to the elements panel, right click, copy outer SVG, and head on over to CodePen. So over here in CodePen, we're just going to go ahead and paste in the SVG code that we copied out. And you're gonna see one stroke here, and you might have trouble seeing those black strokes on that dark background. Well, don't fret. What I'm gonna do here is just take out the gradient code for the stroke with a little copy. 
and paste it into the other paths. That looks nice, and the benefit of doing it this way is that I only have one radial gradient defined in my depths, and if I ever need to make any changes to it, I just do it in one place. If I had done it in boxy, I would have had multiple gradient definitions up here, and I didn't want to deal with that. So hopefully now you can see that it looks quite nice as this bright green color fades into that transparent green color. Now we can hop into our JavaScript and check out some of the code we already have in here. I'm loading and registering the Motion Path plugin and Draw SVG plugin. I'm creating a variable for an SVG namespace that we'll be using in our create element method down here. But let's not jump too far ahead. I'm defining a main timeline that's going to contain all of the animations for all the circles on all the paths. And then here I have a create animation function that's going to take in a path group. As you may recall, we have all of our paths in a group with an ID of paths as set in boxy SVG. So when we call this function, we're going to tell it what path group we're using. And then we're going to select all of the paths in that path group using path group .query selector all and look for every path. Then we're going to loop through all those paths and we're going to create circles for each path, giving them these sort of default attributes. And then we're going to append the circle to the path group. I'm not going to go over this in any more detail because we've talked about dynamically creating circles before. Outside of the function, I'm defining my path group variable by selecting the group with the ID of paths. And then here is where I'm going to have all the magic happen. So let me just uncomment this function call. And now you might notice that there are a few red circles up here, okay? And they're all positioned next to each other because I am offsetting their CX value by 10 for each one. I just wanted to prove to you that I could create circles based on the number of paths and get them to render inside of my path group. To get these circles to be attached to the paths and animate on them, well, that's where my next timeline is going to come in. So right after we've created the circle and added it to our path group, I'm going to come down here and we're going to create a timeline for that circle. So we're just going to create a variable called TL for the timeline. We're going to do a two tween on each circle. Using the motion path plugin, we're going to set the path we're going to follow to the current path. We're going to align to the current path and set the align origin to the center. And by doing this, what you'll see is that all of the circles are going to animate at the same time. All right. So that's sort of a win right there, but you may notice that nothing is hooked up to GS Dev Tools. All right, I can't replay this for you. So once I've created the animation for each circle, I'm gonna take that timeline and I'm gonna add it to the main one by doing main.add and I'm gonna pass in TL. If we go down to the bottom, again, you'll see that the animation for GS Dev Tools is main. And now you'll see that all the circles are playing one after the other, all right? And it takes quite a while to get through this entire animation. Well, the reason for that is that we added them one after each other, okay? That's just the way things work when we call add in succession. So what I'm gonna do is start by adding them all at a time of zero. And now you'll see they all play at the same time for the same duration, and we have it all controlled with GS Dev Tools. Now, I would like to add a little bit of variation and randomness to all of this. So one thing we can do is randomize the duration by just using something like random between three and five. And now you'll see they all start at the same time, but they all don't end at the same time. And that's getting us closer to what I want. However, I also like to randomize the insertion time. So instead of having them all inserted into main at a time of zero, we can do a little gsap.utils.random and pass the number between zero and one. And that's just gonna add a little bit of a staggering to the start times of each of these dots, and they're not gonna get too far away from each other. And I think this is exactly what I like so far. Now you may be wondering, Carl, 
Why are the dots still red? Well, now that we know what colors we're using in our strokes, what we can do is go up to the HTML and we'll pull out this green color that we're using in our gradient. And inside the JavaScript here, instead of having this hard-coded red, we'll just pass in that value. And now you should see that we have some nice looking green dots, all right? I just love it. Now, one thing you may notice is that at the beginning of the animation, you sort of see all of these dots here, okay? And they're just sitting there until they start playing. And then when they get to the end, they all just sort of stack up over here, all right? My paths go right to the edge of the SVG, and the SVG is going right to the edge of my window. It would probably look a bit nicer if they maybe faded in and then faded out. So guess what? I have an idea for that. So let's just shrink things down a little bit here. And right after I have my motion path tween, I'm going to add another tween here that's going to animate the circle from an opacity of zero and a scale of zero with a short duration of 0 0.5 and the transform origin in the center. The important part right now is that we're inserting this tween into this timeline at the same time that the first tween starts. So now what you'll see is that they fade in and scale up. Let's make it a little bit wider here. And now we go back to the beginning. You don't see any circles at the beginning and they scale up and fade in when they're needed. And you'll see now that they are still bunching up at the end here. Well, instead of adding another tween, what I'm going to do is tell this tween here that it should repeat once. We'll set yo-yo to true. And here the somewhat clever part is that we're going to set the repeat delay to be the timeline's current duration minus one. Now you may be scratching your heads, but don't worry. Let's give this a look and see how it works. We'll see we fade in and scale up and then they all shrink down there. It would really help if you could see that a little bit bigger. I just love how these SVGs scale. At the end, you'll see right before they get to the end, they do that little shrink down and fade out for the last half a second, all right? Looks really good. So to help you better understand that magic repeat delay formula, let's take a look at this little chart. Imagine a timeline where the motion path tween is four seconds long and we're going to take half a second to scale up at the beginning and half a second to scale down at the end. What we need to do is figure out this amount of time in between. So we're basically going to take the duration of the motion path tween and chop off the duration of this one and this one to get that magic value which here is going to make the repeat delay equal to 4 minus 1, which is going to be 3. And if you want to just do it visually, the time between 0 0.5 and 3.5 is also 3 seconds, all right? I think I'm good on the math here. So one more look at our little formula. We're taking the timeline's duration and we're subtracting 1 because we know the scale up and scale down are both 0 0.5 and two 0.5s give us this one here. And again, we're randomly setting the duration of the previous tween, which is why we need to dynamically get the timeline's duration. And now, each time we load this up, we're going to get a fresh animation with fresh settings, all right? We'll go really big, watch it again. Each tween has a random duration, a random start time, and also, it all works out that all the balls fade in and scale up and scale down perfectly at the beginning and end. So by just combining a few things that we've learned previously in this course about SVG and all of our little GSAP tips, with a little bit of clever programming, we can get beautiful things like this. And what's great about this approach is that it's totally flexible. Check out this SVG I have in Boxy. It looks like a bunch of circles, but if I go into the Elements panel, you're going to see that it's actually a group with an ID of paths. And in there, I converted all the circles into paths. So now I can just right click, copy outer SVG, go into my file, and in the HTML panel, I can select all the code I had, delete it, paste in that SVG, and now look what you have. 
a bunch of little dots going around these rings with that same sort of staggered offset, all right? So I would love for you to dive into this function, make sure you understand it all. If you haven't been through this entire course, it's so important that you go over the previous exercises of dynamically creating SVG elements using motion path, and of course, all of the timeline basics. So draw some paths in your favorite editor of choice, plop them into this file, and let me see what you come up with. I'd love to see it. So I hope you've enjoyed this little video. I don't want to keep you much longer, but I do want you to know that I worked at Greensock back when this was their logo, okay? I was there when they started transitioning from Flash to JavaScript, and I was learning most of these tools before documentation even existed, all right? So I'm just creating lessons that I wish I had when I was learning this stuff, all right? I've taught thousands of developers how to master the basics of GSAP and use all their special tools, all right? I've been doing this for over 10 years, and uh, although the lessons might not always be the prettiest or the fanciest, I really want you to master the fundamentals so that when you see effects online, you can say, hey, you know what? I know what tools I need to build that, all right? So there's this old saying that says, if you want to learn how to build a house, grab a hammer and follow a home builder around for six months. Well, through my Creative Coding Club courses, that's basically what I'm allowing you to do, okay? I want you to jump in, do the lessons just a little bit each week, and you'll have an opportunity to see just how I would build these things, all right? I'll show you step by step. We'll look at the CSS, the HTML. I'll teach you some basic JavaScript tricks along the way. You don't have to be a front end expert for this stuff, all right? I'm gonna keep it simple, but you're gonna be amazed at the results if you put in the time. So I welcome you to check out these courses and discover the joy of animating with code. See you in the club.